All right, guys, today we're jumping into Clipflow and we're gonna add image uploads. So we've done this before, but very simple using active storage and rails. We wanna achieve this here. So we're gonna have a little image. And then if you don't have a thumbnail set up, we're gonna show this blank state here. Hit new project. We're gonna add this little upload guy where you can choose your file, hit upload and create your project. And then we're gonna just set up the credentials required for production. All right, let's jump in. Let's do this. So firstly, we're gonna just run the generator to get active storage installed. And to do that, we're just gonna jump here. I'm just gonna stop the server and then we're just gonna run rails active storage install there we go so what it's done in here for us is it's if we just close all this and we go into db migrate have a look down the bottom here we got create active storage tables it's going to create the blobs table the attachments table and the variant records so let's run that now so we go rails db migrate shove that into the db all right now, if I open it up, so if we go into clip flow here, then we can see that we've got an active storage attachments, blobs and variant records right there. All right, so I'm just in this, the docs here. So let's go and have a look at, we should have the config storage YAML file. So we go config storage YAML file here. So local, we're using our disk, which is fine. And then for when we use Amazon, uh, when we go to production, we will uncomment this. So what we can do is actually just do this here, set that up for us. So we're gonna, we need to set these credentials here for when we go to production and also a bucket. I might just leave this until the end just so that we can have a look at that later, but just highlighting it there or if you're using Google, Microsoft or something else. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do now is we wanna have a project, right? And it has one, gonna, this will be the thumbnail, right? So we'll use this as the thumbnail here. So it has one. So if we have a look here, let's go here, has one attached, all right? So we're gonna go into our model, so app, models, and then look for project. And then what we're gonna say here, has one attached, and this has got avatar. So we're gonna call this thumbnail. Now, thinking there is a thumbnail can have variants of different sizes, also thumbs, right? So they have different sizes, but I think that we'll, we'll keep that just because that's the naming convention in YouTube. You'll have a thumbnail, a YouTube thumbnail. So let's have a look here. Now, what we want to do as well, inside of our gem file, we need the image processing gem. There was this one here, right? We want to have image processing. So this is allows us to make variants. So let's just uncomment that there. And then we're going to run here. We're going to go bundle and we'll go and fetch that and install that for us. All right, and then we can run our server with bin dev again. So now we have the ability to upload a thumbnail. So if we go into, we don't have an edit project one, but we can do it on the new project. So we, let's see, I haven't, we haven't implemented edit yet, but we can do new. All right, so what we'll do is we'll add a thumbnail spot here. So let's jump into views projects form, right? We're gonna use the project form here. And at the moment, we've just got this guy. So we're gonna add another one, right? And then this will be title, thumbnail. And then the key for this will be, I believe it's just thumbnail, right? And then we're gonna also need to set the field type. So if we jump into our app components folder and we look for our form field component here, we can see that we have field type, right? So we can supply that in. So I'm gonna just look here. So we're gonna go attribute key, and then we're gonna say field type, file field. So that's field type, sorry. Field type is file field. All right, so let's refresh this now. All right, doesn't look 100% good. So but anyway, we'll keep moving. So we're gonna say construction manager 003 and I'll just grab one, just say setting up models. And then here we'll need to grab a file. So over here I've got a thumbnail file. We'll open that one, add it there. Before we upload, we need to allow that through. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say permit thumbnail. All right, so that that can come through. 
and hopefully I've done everything that we need to do. So if we now hit create project, there we go. We can see that something got uploaded and it's inserted. So that's all good. So we allowed that through. Now what we want to do is we want to display and render that there. So we're going to jump into the project partial right here. And then we want to render the thumbnail. Okay, so to do this, we are going to render inside of this block here. At the moment, it's just this nothingness. So what we're going to do, I've copied this code from Construction Manager, but if we go here, if project has thumbnail attached, then we're going to get the URL for, we're just going to put an image in here. Otherwise, we're just going to use the project title first letter and upcase that. Let's have a look. There we go. So that's already working. You can see it just popped straight in there, but it isn't the right size. So we just have to have a look 189 by 89. So we just have to check, are oh, we got padding in here? So we do have padding. So we're going to probably have to remove that. I'm just trying to move this guy out of the way there. So we currently have padding, which we don't want. And then we also got some sort of, looks like some sort of margin that we need to remove as well. So let's just have a look here. So we've got P2, do not need padding, right? And then we also want to set this overflow to hidden. So let's just check in, in tailwind overflow and we want overflow hidden so that we can maintain our round corners. You can see that there, it's kept them there. Now, just something's going on up here, which I just need to understand what. So the image is there. Max width 100% height auto. So we need to make this image fit. Let's fit into this. So we need to go height. So we'll just need to style this image so that it looks right. All right, so to make this image fit in here, what we need to do is we're going to give it a height of 100%. So you can see that there, but then it's a bit, it looks a bit squashed. So we're going to have an object fit cover so that it maintains its aspect ratio there. All right, so to do that, we're going to go in here and we're going to say style equals height 100%. And I reckon we could probably use Tailwind for this cover. Let's just check that that works first. So that does. So now let's, let's go in here. So Tailwind, we can just say height 100%, height full. So if we go here, class equals H full. And then we need object fit cover object fit object cover there we go let's see if that still maintains it for us yes it does perfect so that's it there and that's that's as simple as the image uploads were really what else we're going to center this stuff here so let's items end let's go items center we'll probably not do a letter but i think we're going to have a um a blank, blank state image here saying thumbnail required. I think we've got a design for that. So let's have a look. So we have the thumbnail here that we're going to use. So we're going to chuck that into new folder. I'm going to create a new folder here. I'm going to go projects here, projects. And then we're going to grab this and we're going to go thumbnail missing right there. All right, so we're gonna either, if we have a thumbnail, we're gonna render that. Otherwise, we are going to render the thumb. Now missing. So let's have a look at where I've done that. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna drop in the image tag and the path to the image is going to be project slash um, th thumbnail missing. Let's just have a look. That's thumbnail missing.png, perfect. And the class, we'll just leave as blank for now. We might just use the same. We might just use this here. 
actually. Same class. There we go, so we got our thumbnail missing. So that's what it looks like when we got a thumbnail missing and that's what it looks like when we have a thumbnail. Pretty simple to get that one working. So I think that's all we need to do for now. Let's just double check the design um, here. So it looks like it actually has a, an overlay on top here. So we might just, let's try and implement that actually. So we just chuck it here, a relative class on here. And then what we're gonna do is we'll put a div class here, chuck that there. And then what we're gonna do <clears throat> is gonna go w full h full, and we're gonna say position. So this is gonna be absolute. And we want to have a background. So let, whoops, if we go here to background, let's see if we can go background color, BG black. And I'm going to just chuck an opacity on. So there we go, we've got a BG black, but now we want to have a, a transparency or an opacity. So if we close that and we say, let's say, be something like this. 20% opacity, maybe a bit darker. Let's go 40, 50. And it almost looks like it's got a grayscale thrown on top of there. So let's see if Tailwind actually has something that can help us with that. Okay, so what I've done actually is I've removed that overlay and instead of adding a, a new overlay, I've, I've just added mix blend overlay to the actual image and you can now see down here, it's all dark. So if we remove that, that's what it looks like. And put that in now, it's blending that layer with the background and that's kind of what we're actually trying to go for there. And I'll do the same <coughs> with this guy and there we go. So now it just hides a little bit from, and it's not as like intense and that's looking pretty good. All right, so in a very short video, we were able to add in the image uploads there. But before I go, I did promise that we would check out the settings for production. So let's do that because we will need to deploy this. So I'll close all that off in the slowest way possible. And then from there, we're gonna go into, we wanna set up the config for our environments so that we can then use them in here. So first steps, Let's just uncover that, all right? Now, we're gonna use, I'm just gonna grab it from another project, but we're actually gonna use the same region. So our region, so yeah, we'll, what I'll do is I'll grab this one and I'll paste it here. All right, so now I'll, the credentials will determine the region. That makes it easier, not hard coded. And then what we wanna do is we want to edit the credentials, all right? So I'm gonna grab it from another project as well and update this readme. So let's go here. So we're gonna do, the first thing is we're gonna add credentials for production because we don't need credentials for local because we are actually just running that using the local storage. So editor equals, and then in quotation marks, code space dash dash wait. So we're gonna wait for the code to open and then we're gonna do rails credentials edit production environment, all right? So let's run that, open. Now what we can see inside of our app, it's created this credentials folder. And inside of that, you can see the production.key. So we always wanna keep this key safe. That's what we share with other devs. That doesn't get committed. You can see it's grayed out. And that's what we'll use as the environment variable when we're deploying this app. And then here's the actual encoded file. So no one can read that, it's encrypted. Sorry, not encoded, encrypted. So let's go here. So we wanna do this, this AWS piece. So chuck that there. So we need our secret key. We need our, so let's see, it's, we've got access key, secret access key, which is there. And then we need to have region and S3 bucket. So I'm gonna add region. And then we also need to have S3 bucket, right? So we need all of these things. So I'll just do that for now, right? So what you'll do is you'll set this up in AWS. You'll set, create yourself an IAM user, and then you're gonna grab the things you need and put them in here and then save them away, all right? 
So this is all you need to do here. And then once you have that going, you'll be able to use AWS storage in production environment. All right, so for me, we're gonna use something like the region will be AP Southeast 2, which is in Australia. And then mine would be Clipflow Production would be my bucket. And then obviously these guys are secret, so I'll keep those to myself, but set that up in AWS. And then from there, you should be good to go. The only thing that you'll need to remember is that when you deploy this, you need to set this production key, all right? So I will reset this one, create a new key for myself, but that's what you wanna be remembering, all right? So mine's that at the moment, gonna reset that. You'll do the same. And then when we create an environment variable, you'll have something like, it's called, what's the key? It's called master key, I believe. And then you can pass this in, all right? That's what it'll look like. All right, and that should be all you need to do. And then you've got image uploads and also displaying them very, very simply. All right, so I'll catch you on the next one.